Imagine yourself sitting atop a huge mountain of cash, which you may or may not have accumulated through means that are not exactly considered legal. What if the money you were able to gain gave you billionaire status and enough purchasing power to buy everything you ever wanted? Wouldn't you like to make sure your money always appears clean? This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell or else I'll be looking into you too. So first things first, what exactly is money laundering? Well, money laundering is when you take funds that you were able to gain through practices that may not exactly be allowed and conceal where they really came from, thus making them clean. Money laundering came to be the term for any process that, in effect, cleans dirty money, allowing it to be used in your everyday purchases. Now, to be able to launder money, you're going to need to move a few things around. Transferring money and other ways to avoid negative outcomes is something of an art form. It can be done by small, medium, and large enterprises alike. Small-time criminals and billionaires and even big investment banks are able to come up with such a scheme in order to make sure that money stays with them, no matter how questionable its origins. Now, the question is, how exactly do you go about legitimizing questionable revenue that you were able to gain through a few not-so-legitimate means? The very first step is to make sure that your assets are well away from the clutches of authorities who could pry. Second, you would want to try and avoid paying taxes at all so that it cannot be so easily traced. You also need to make sure that you have easy access to your cash and that you can take it out and spend it any time that you like. You should not hide all of your wealth in some secluded place where nobody can see just how much money you have. <laughs> no. What is the point then of having any money at all? You want to be able to spend it as much as you please. On supermodels, fancy cars, fine dining, luxury vacations, you name it. So where exactly are you supposed to place your secretly ill-gotten wealth? Sit back and relax as I tell you about how some nations, institutions, and even individuals are able to get away with laundering their money. The rich people of today usually require that their money can be accessed from anywhere in the world. It is reported that the majority of the money laundering taking place today is not to hide any seedy businesses, but instead it is done to be able to get a little bit of money from countries that are not exactly open to the idea of its people having so much money to spend. Take China for example. The nation seems to be riding the wave of prosperity its economy has been facing, seeing how it is home to more billionaires than any other nation on earth. However, this does not mean that they could spend their money as freely as they wish. The Chinese have strict rules on what they can and cannot do with their money, and Chinese nationals face severe consequences if they do not follow the rules to a T. So what do some Chinese billionaires do with their money? They take it out of China and open a bank account in a nation with less stringent regulations where they can store their money and spend it as they please. Although that probably sounds peachy keen for those who are able to get away with it, it is actually a very bad situation to be in. If someone is able to successfully move their money out of China, then they will no longer be held accountable for any crimes they might have committed to earn that money. They cannot contest any charges that may be slapped on them because there is no longer any physical proof that they have that kind of money. That also means that any money that could be used to improve the local economy would go into improving another nation's economy instead. A nation where this actually happened is South Africa. The country basically saw a majority of its upper class pack up and move away, bringing all their wealth with them. Because China does not want the exact same thing to happen to them, the government set strict limitations on how much Chinese yen could be exchanged to other currencies in a year. Individuals are only permitted to exchange 50,000 US dollars worth of Chinese money in a year. Now, if you were living in China and you had something like a billion dollars, moving 50 US dollars at a time isn't exactly going to get you living life in the fast lane fast. You're going to need to speed things up a bit, so you would need to course your money through a casino. Luckily for you, the country is just right next door to Macau, which is best known for its luxurious gambling industry. 
The city of Macaw is the most prominent gambling center in the world, beating out even glitzy Las Vegas. Now, what you do next is you buy a tourist package and convert $100 million of your money to poker chips and play some games using those chips. You would need to make it seem like you were able to earn your $100 million in Macaw instead of China, and gambling away some might just give you the perfect cover. Now when your high rolling vacation is over, you can then settle your chips and cash them into dollars, which allows you to go around Chinese law and get all your money to yourself, without having to worry whether or not you're being monitored for your excessive spending habits. You may be wondering to yourself, why is China letting its people get away with this? The answer's simple. Since Macau is a special administrative region of China, if China interferes with Macau's main industry and attempts to shut it down, it would look very bad on China for people to see the Macau's economy dwindle right as the nation fell under Chinese rule. This would come at an especially bad time, as China is currently trying to convince other small nations to follow Macau's example. Additionally, China is also trying to take more preventative measures against money laundering, but it just means that citizens need to travel a little further to be able to execute the process. Speaking of getting all the money to yourself, let's take a look at the life of Al Capone. Al Capone is known as one of history's most notorious gangsters. He was the leader of a very profitable empire of organized crime, but when he was finally put on trial, he could only be convicted of trying to get out of paying his taxes. His earnings back in his day was roughly 100 million a year, which is equivalent to a billion dollars in today's currency. He was able to earn all of his money from illegal gambling, bootlegging, prostitution, and extortion among other things. The money that he earned would have been enough proof of his crimes, but when the time came and Capone had to face the music, nobody could pinpoint where his money went. Capone had stealthily hidden his money by investing in various businesses. Cash-only laundromats were one of them, which is partially why money laundering is named like so. However, Capone was not the first to try to conceal his money's unsavory origins. The practice of laundering money dates all the way back to when money first existed. Merchants tried to lessen their taxes by hiding how much wealth they actually had, and pirates would attempt to sell off their bounty without disclosing where exactly their bounty came from. The dawning of the virtual age opened up more doors for people to be able to more easily process their funds and has also unfortunately paved the way for more people to be able to seamlessly launder their money. There are three basic steps in laundering money. First, money is converted into assets that look legitimate. Usually this means depositing the funds into a bank account under someone else's name. If the money cannot be traced to you at first glance, chances are you're safe. Sometimes these accounts don't even need to be within the country you are residing in. Case in point, my story about China from earlier on in this video. Second, the money undergoes a series of transactions to move it around and disperse it even further, so as to not raise any suspicion as to how an enormous amount of wealth suddenly appeared out of nowhere. This could even mean buying expensive items such as cars, real estate, fine art, or jewelry, so as to give the money some sort of disguise. Lastly, when the money appears to be cleared, the launderer can finally use it for whatever they want without arousing any suspicion. They may invest it into legal businesses and claim that it was a payment for goods or services, or they could even set up a fake charity where they could control the distribution of the money. If you were laundering money, you could even build your own restaurant and alter customer receipts to show incredibly high total bills, so that you could say that that is where your money came from. The United States only recognized money laundering as a federal crime in 1986. Prior to that, they needed other charges to be able to slap someone with a money laundering case. Now authorities all over the world are on the lookout for launderer funds that could be traced back to various illegal activities. Presently, the United Nations, national governments, and various organizations dedicated themselves in the fight against money laundering, even though it is still very much prevalent in today's society. Numerous prominent figures, government officials, and huge financial institutions have been discovered to launder their funds, and while it is not known exactly how much money is laundered in a year, the estimate is somewhere close to $100 billion. Now that I've been able to talk about money laundering extensively, what are your thoughts on it? Do you know any of history's most famous money launderers? 
let's talk about it in the comments section down below and I will reply to all of you who comment within the first hour. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my other video on how Starbucks became a $100 billion company to see how Starbucks capitalized on how much people are willing to pay for a good cup of coffee. Stay tuned and stay educated.